In the fall of 1846, Alexander Culbertson, who worked for the American Fur Company, played a large role in the construction of Fort Lewis. Fort Lewis was located three miles upriver on the south side from where present Fort Benton is now. Alexander Culberson maintained a good relationship with the Indians and ended up marrying a couple of Indian women. The last one he married, named Natawisda, was related to the Blackfoot Indian tribe. And so Culberson traveled downriver and laid out the perimeter of what became a trading post known as Fort Benton. As a result, on May 19, 1847, Fort Lewis was disassembled. The logs were floated down the river and the trading post of Fort Benton was constructed. Fort Benton got its name uh, is really an interesting story. Uh, Thomas Hart Benton, who was a, uh, a senator at the time and a good friend of the American Fur Company, uh, uh, was pulling strings for the Fur Company to stay in business and because they were getting in trouble with the government for selling whiskey to the Indians and and all that that goes with uh, the Indian trade. And then the Indians in coaxed him to move the fort down to the present site, and they named it Fort Lewis again, and then they decided, oh, one of the men in the, in the company, uh, so they named it Fort Clay for a little while. Uh, then it became um, um, Fort Benton officially, uh, on the books it was in 1848, uh, down, down the river, but, um, Culbertson had a Christmas party and announced to everyone that the fort's name would officially and finally be in honor of uh, Senator Benton, and they named it on Christmas Day in 1850, and that's how Fort Benton got the name from uh, the senator that, that helped us tremendously, uh, the American Fur Company, stay in business and, uh, and be up here with the Indians. And it was the Blackfoot people who traded here at Fort Benton bringing in primarily buffalo robes and hides to trade for items that the American traders had, as well as the finer furs, including beaver, fox, coyote, etc. But to back up a bit, uh, Alexander Culbertson in 1843 had been down at Fort Laramie in what's now Wyoming on the uh, North Platte River, and he was impressed with the qualities of adobe. So starting in 1850, uh, the buildings of the trading post were converted from wood to adobe. Adobe bricks are simply dried mud or river clay with a binding element in them. And between 1850 and 1860, the trading post uh, was converted to adobe, finished in 1860. Fort Benton is unbelievably uh, important for the area because um, well this was the last place that uh, the fur trade basically got most of its furs and ended up being the rope trade towards the end because of the invention of silk or the coming of silk from Japan and China. The center of the area was the farthest they could get boats up uh, especially steamboats from 1860 on uh, we became the, uh, the central hub or the terminus of trade for uh, the large watercraft. So we were the terminus and uh, uh, all trails led from Fort Benton. So basically we were the, the start of Montana as an economic uh, uh, hub. So we are in the middle and uh, uh, the town was never hardly much bigger than it is now, but man, the importance that it had uh, was incredible. From Fort Benton, they would have to. They would. We would take all of our furs down, all of our robes, all the way down to Fort Union, on mostly Mackinaws. Sometimes, like with a kill boat, like is on the levee, but they were mostly Mackinaws, and they were. All this was our shipyard or our boat building yard was right down river at Shonkin Creek, and so we built all of our boats there and took them down, and that was a labor-intensive thing, and then then to get all the trade items up. The men would have to actually pull them by the rope, by the cord, and basically pull those boats all the way up to Fort Benton with the goods in them. So in the steamboat, where you mechanized could come up and down, it just made everything uh, tremendously easier and better. In 1859, then, it took a real long time from Fort Union at the mouth of Yellowstone to start getting up here, because the first steamboats were for the Mississippi. They were made out of hardwoods 
They took a, they, they really were deep in the water and we're real shallow up here. So they finally figured out if they would build steamboats that were real out of light woods, they were real white dra light draft, and instead of being side wheelers, they were stern wheelers and they were cut in the middle so they were real easy to maneuver and mostly they were smaller than the big ones on the Mississippi then. So they were finally able, they got to about halfway between here and the Marias in 59. And then in 1860, the Chippewa and the Key West made it all the way up to here. And that was a big day, you know, Shoto was along and, and it, you know, it made Fort Benton the head of navigation on the Missouri River and Mississippi drainage. And it made Fort Benton the world's innermost port. So Fort Benton, instead of just a Blackfoot post, became the world's innermost port and it became really important to this whole big region, including, including Western Canada. Between 1860 and 1887, there were 148 different steamboats that arrived here on the levee in Fort Benton, bringing trade goods up uh, beginning from St. Louis and then as the railroads headed west to places like uh, Vermilion and Bismarck and so on, the steamboats would load at those points after the uh, railroads had transshipped the merchandise to those points and then come up to Fort Benton. Then in 87, we got the railroad. And of course, Fort Benton would let the railroad into town because we were in competition with it, with our steamboats. And you know how that turned out, not good at all for us. But it's really wonderful because you go to all these other cities and towns along the Missouri River and the railroad tracks run right along the river. Fort Benton has a park and walking trails and statues. And I mean, we have the, you know, as, as cool a levee as you can possibly have. And that was a result of the steamboats. We wouldn't let the railroad in. 